Hello, my name is Frank Clegg and I spent over 40 years in the technology sector. My most recent position is a president of Microsoft Canada. In my career, I've seen the tremendous benefit that technology can provide. I've also seen the potential harm if technology is not implemented correctly. And I believe our current implementation of wireless technology is not safe. That's why I co-founded Canadians for Safe Technology and why I joined the Business Advisory Group of the Environmental Health Trust. I am especially concerned about our current implementation of 5G wireless technology. And the more research I do and the more experts I talk to, the more concerned I become. Now, there's no doubt that there are benefits such as autonomous vehicle and faster download speeds. At the same time, I think there is potential harm. I think it's important that we understand that 5G is not just an incremental number on our cell phones. In fact, over 230 scientists and researchers from 41 countries around the world have formally written to the United Nations, their member nations, and the World Health Organization expressing their concern over the planned rollout of 5G technology, especially for vulnerable populations such as children, pregnant women, and the environmentally sensitive. They have been joined by state legislatures and federal regulators who have asked the FCC to provide evidence that there is no harm from the rollout of 5G technology. There's no doubt that the engineers and businesses and companies that roll out technology are well-meaning. However, their focus is on being first to market and getting new products into the market as efficiently and quickly as they can. I am not aware of any research or studies by my industry or related industry that deal at all with the health or safety effects of wireless technology. Here are some important facts about 5G. 5G technology has not been tested. I am not aware of a single study that shows that 5G technology is safe. 5G, as in all other wireless technology, gives off radio frequency radiation, which is absorbed in the human body and accumulates in the human body. One segment of 5G technology are millimeter waves. Millimeter waves are used by the US and Israeli government in their active denial systems which are used for crowd control. And what they do is they provide a very painful reaction in the skin organs of the body. We have no idea what the impacts will be to human health if that kind of millimeter wave technology is used and we are exposed to it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are significant proven health effects from wireless technology and wireless devices. These include insomnia, headaches, fatigue, heart palpitations, all caused by exposure to wireless devices and the radiation from them. More serious symptoms and conditions include heart arrhythmia, infertility, tinnitus, numbness or tingling in the extremities, diabetes, cancer, and permanent DNA damage. Mental health is also impacted with increased anxiety, depression, rises in ADHD and autism, mood swings, and emotional instability. In fact, all of these health factors and conditions have risen exponentially over the last 30 years and hundreds of studies that show proof of biological harm from wireless devices. Most recently, in 2018, the National Institute of Health's National Toxicology Program released the findings of a 14-year, $25 million study that showed clear evidence of harm in terms of cancer and permanent DNA damage. This study, several months later, was verified by the prestigious Ramazzini Institute out of Italy, which found the same results. Now you may ask how a product that has this potential harm could ever be released to the market and to the public for public use. Well, the way the process works is the FCC regulates all wireless devices and products associated with them. Unfortunately, the FCC is made up of previous telecom executives, lawyers, and engineers. It does not have any scientists or doctors that you would expect to be involved with the regulation of potentially harmful products. In fact, the FCC guidelines are 20 years out of date without any major significant improvement. Countries such as China, Russia, Italy, and Switzerland have safety guidelines that are 100 times safer for their citizens. The FCC guidelines are based on small, short-term, infrequent exposure. They do not worry about the accumulated effects for multiple devices. 
They don't measure or monitor exposure 24 hours a day or seven days a week. And they have no special consideration for children, pregnant women, or those who have shown environmentally sensitivities to wireless radiation. In addition to the concerns about the guidelines, there is actually no oversight provided by the FCC. And in fact, the telecommunications industry is self-policing. So what we are left with is almost a wild west scenario where the regulations and the guidelines are significantly lacking and the industry is left to its own accord to roll this technology out to the marketplace. In addition to the concerns about the FCC guidelines themselves, the Federal Telecommunications Act of 1996 prohibits any telecommunication company to be sued on the basis of the safety or health of their products. So in other words, there is no liability to the telecommunications industry of any of the impacts of their products. Just last week, the reinsurer Swiss Re came out with their annual forecasts, and they specifically identified 5G technology as an upcoming insurable health concern globally over the next three years. There is also mounting evidence that the telecommunications industry knew about the potential impacts of RF radiation years ago. And in fact, we're starting to see some of the behavior from my industry similar to what the tobacco industry did over the last few decades. The telecommunications industry has over 500 lobbyists working in Congress and other areas of legislature protecting the industry. Together, all of these issues that I've referenced, plus the general lack of awareness in the general public, have led us to the situation where we are today. So where are we today? Today we currently have a significant amount of exposure in our homes, in our businesses, in our schools, and in most public areas we go to. Cisco has announced and predicted by 2030 there will be over 500 billion wirelessly connected devices in the world. That works out to be almost 60 devices for every person on the planet. Many states and cities around the world are debating and passing legislation about the rollout of 5G technology. And in fact, what we're seeing in the U.S. is at the federal and the state level, they're fast-tracking some of this legislation to support the rollout of 5G infrastructure. Unfortunately, this legislation seems to be taking away all individual rights and the rights of local towns and counties and cities and passing more power to the telecommunication companies. We believe this is a historic and precedent-setting power shift from the individual and state and local level over to an industry. In fact, many communities in the U.S. and around the world are passing moratoriums preventing the rollout of 5G technology until it is proven safe. 5G will impact you personally. There are designs that show the requirement for small cell 5G antennas as close as every third house in the neighborhood and could be as close as every 500 feet in public areas. The impact of that radiation at that level of frequency and intensity and power 24 hours a day and seven days a week is unprecedented and is not understood. I've spent the last five years of my life, have, I've had the opportunity to meet with experts on a worldwide basis who have spent their careers studying the impact of wireless radiation and devices. I've also had the opportunity to meet with some of the great minds in the technology sector who have helped create these tremendous products that we use in our lives and provide tremendous benefit to us. I am convinced that there are safer alternatives available so we can have the best of both worlds. Technology that can provide the tremendous benefits, but technology that is safe. There is no incentive or motivation to provide the research and the funding to look for safer alternatives. So that's why it's up to us to help encourage that investment. That can be by asking our legislators to pass legislation, encouraging industry to do it, or it can be by us directly trying to advocate for change in the industry to allow them to become more responsible to provide safer technology that still provides tremendous benefit. We can't do this all on our own. We need your help. Here's what you can do. The most important thing is to get educated. We have provided a little bit of an overview and some of the scientific evidence that shows there's a potential harm. But now you have to take the initiative. There are some tremendous websites, Canadians for Safe Technology, the Environmental Health Trust, 
saferemr.com and the Physicians for Safe Technology. There are also other resources that are listed at the end of this video. We encourage you to spread the word, share this information, share the video with your coworkers, with your family, with your friends, with legislators at the state and federal level, even your local school boards can have an impact if they choose to engage. Ultimately, your knowledge is in your power and your power is in your hands. I fundamentally believe we can have the best of both worlds. That is access to the technology and the tremendous benefits it provides, but in a safe manner. We are advocates for safe technology, not no technology. I thank you for your time.